Welcome to our first video of our statistics series. This video is going to really introduce the idea of statistics and answer the question, what is statistics? And as we start studying statistics, there is some key vocabulary that we need to be very comfortable with in order to study statistics accurately and communicate our results accurately. So the first word we need to know in statistics is what we call the population. The population is basically everything or everyone. We usually are talking about people, but not necessarily being studied. Maybe we're investigating college students. The population would be all college students. Number two, the second word we need to know is what we call a parameter. And a parameter is some characteristic. of the population. If we're talking about all college students, the parameter might be the average GPA. That would be a parameter of the population. When we're talking about parameters, just as a note for now, we will usually use Greek letters to represent parameters. You'll see things like the Greek letter mu or the Greek letter sigma. Something in Greek generally means we're talking about a parameter of the entire population. This is different than if I was talking about a sample. A sample is a portion of the larger population. So if I went out and said we're studying college students and their average GPA, the sample might be I took a sample of 200 college students. That would be my sample. And then with a the sample, we have these things called statistics. Hence the name of our course. A statistic is a characteristic of the sample. So this might be the average GPA of the 200 college students I interviewed. And to differentiate samples and populations, statistics, and parameters, with statistics, we will use English letters. These English letters would be something like what we'll call x bar or just the letter s. So as we're looking at statistics of samples, which hopefully will estimate the parameter of a population, we're also interested in what are called variables. And these are not the variables of algebra. A variable is any characteristic of interest gathered from each item in the sample. Another way to think about the variable is it's really, when I'm conducting a survey, it's really the question that is being asked. So for example, with our college students, we'd be asking them, what is your GPA? Our variable is the GPA. And then our last word for this part will be what we'll call the data or the actual values of the variables. 
So a data for our example would be something like 2.38, a 3.47, a 4.0. That is the data. So let's see if we can use this key vocabulary in an example. See if we can identify the key vocabulary. You want to know the average cost of statistics textbooks. So you survey 25 textbooks. And we're going to find and identify these key terms, these same six key terms, the population, the parameter, the sample, the statistic, the variable, and the data. First, the population. The population is everything that we're possibly interested in. So we're talking about statistics textbooks. The population would be all statistics textbooks. And the parameter that we're interested in studying about those statistics textbook is the average cost. The average cost. But not just the average cost, but the average cost of all statistics textbooks. Notice how I tie it back to the population, because that's what the parameter describes. That can be contrasted with our sample, slightly different. Now, our sample is the smaller group, the subset we're looking at. This is the 25 textbooks. And then the statistic has to describe that sample. It's our, it's our characteristic of interest for the sample. It is the average cost of, and then tie it back to the sample, the 25 textbooks. Now, the variable, that's the information I'm gathering. The variables, when I look at each textbook, what am I recording? Or the question, what am I asking with the variable? I'm asking the cost of a statistics textbook. And the data is the answer to that question, or the actual values of the variables. So it's the actual cost of the textbooks. An example might be you find an expensive one for $235. That is a piece of data to the variable, an answer to the question. All right, now that we have some vocabulary, let's move on to an example of actually summarizing data, which is what statistics is all about. With statistics, we're often interested in what is called the frequency of an event or thing. And the frequency is just how often a value occurs.
and often we'll organize these frequencies in what we call a frequency table. And to set up a frequency table, we have a little bit more vocabulary. First is what we're going to call the relative frequency. And the relative frequency is just the proportion of times a value occurs. In other words, it's the decimal equivalent of the frequency divided by the total. And often with frequency, we're interested in what's called the cumulative relative frequency. And that is the sum of all previous entries. So with that vocabulary, the way we're going to set up the actual frequency table is frequency tables will generally have four columns. One column for the data value, a column for the frequency, which I'll denote with just f, a column for the relative frequency, which I can denote with rf, and then a column for the cumulative relative frequency, the CRF. And so then we fill in our data values, maybe 1, 2, and so on. Actually, let's just do 1 and 2. And then we'll do the frequency. Maybe the first, the 1 appears 3 times, and the 2 appears 7 times. So out of 10, the relative frequency is 3 out of 10, or 0.3. And for 2, the relative frequency is 7 out of 10, or 0.7. And the cumulative relative frequency will start to add all the previous values. So 0.3 plus 0.7 is 1.0 for the last column. Interesting to note is the last entry should sum to 1. Now, maybe if you have a round off error, it might be 1.000001 or 0.999999. That's OK. But generally speaking, we hope that cumulative relative frequency should sum to 1. That's all to show us how to set up the table. Let's actually make a frequency table. Let's do an example here. Let's say a baker. keeps track of how many free donut holes his customers eat. Twenty-five eat one donut hole. Fifteen eat two donut holes. Seven eat three donut holes. And three eat four donut holes. Let's make a frequency table. We have the values of 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the number of donut holes that were eaten. For the frequencies, we know 25 eat 1 donut hole. So that's our frequency. 15 is the frequency for 2 donut holes, 7 for 3, and 3 eat 4. 
Now, if we want the relative frequency, what we have to do is divide the frequency by the total. So we need to know what the total is. And so if we add these up, we get a total of 50 customers. So when we divide 25 by 50, we get a relative frequency of 0.5. When we do 15 divided by 50, we get a relative frequency of 0.3. 7 divided by 50, we get a relative frequency of 0.14. And 3 divided by 50, we get a relative frequency of 0.06. And the fractions aren't needed so much as the actual decimal answers in our table. And then once we have our relative frequency, we can find the cumulative relative frequency by adding all the values before that. So for 1, we only have the 0.5. But then for 2, we're going to add 0.3. So we add 0.3 to get 0.8. And then we add the next value, add 0.14 to get 0.96. And then we add 0.06 to get 1.00. And that fills in our frequency table. Now that we have our frequency table, we can answer some questions about this baker. We could answer questions like, what percent 8 between? two and three donuts. Two and three donuts have a relative frequency of 0.3 and 0.4. So when we add those together, 0.3 plus 0.14, the percent is 0.44, or as a percent, 44%. How about? What percent 8 more than 3? Well, I'll highlight in pink, more than 3 just means 4. So that must be this last entry of 0.06. And so we can say 0.06 or 6%. Finally, what percent 8 at most 3? Well, I'll mark them in blue here. At most 3 is everybody else. I could add those all together, but what you might notice is that everybody else excludes the 6%. So it might be easier to say we've got 100% as everybody, exclude the 6% that are more than 3, and that leaves us with 94%, 8 at most, 3 donut holes. So the big thing we're doing today is we are looking at statistics vocabulary and organizing data in frequency tables and interpreting that information. Take a look at the homework assignment that goes with this section. And in class, we will investigate these frequency tables a little further.